All right, game number three. And uh, as with the last video, I'm recording this audio uh, after recording the video because I lost the audio. Um, yeah, I didn't want to leave you guys without commentary, so once again, I'll explain. I just wanted to uh, get some audio in here so it's not completely empty. I kept that hand. It was kind of loose, but it has a growing ranks, most likely on turn four, followed by possibly a Centaur's Herald because I'm, I have high hopes of drawing something to populate with... Uh, the three heralds in the deck plus the eyes in the skies, hopefully. Something like that. Alright, so I'm curving out pretty nicely here. Centaur's Herald. Next turn I'm gonna crack it and then play a growing rank soon after. Hopefully followed by Collective Blessing a, a few turns later. But unfortunately he has a response here. And he's going to kill my Centaur with Golgari Charm. Which is pretty good for him because if he didn't do that, I was gonna curve out almost perfectly this game. Now I have all the mana I need, but I have nothing to do this turn, which is pretty significant. Because now that means Growing Ranks is a more or less dead card until I draw something useful. Meanwhile, he's mounting an offense, and I have nothing to do about it. I draw another Centaur's Herald. I choose to play it, because even though it can't defend the Crows to Monitor, it does give me some sort of offense next turn. And then Growing Ranks uh, does the same thing, basically. Also, this lets me uh, Growing Ranks next turn and leave up mana for Swift Justice, in case I want to kill his monitor. Alright, obviously Chump Blocking there would have no effect, because uh, Crow's the Monitor has Trample. So if I blocked and sacked in response, like I usually do, it doesn't matter, because the 3 mana is going to go through anyway. And he has a Slime Molding for 4 which I'm not too upset about because again I have the Swift Justice which turns my Centaur into a 4-3 lifelink first strike which is pretty good against 4-4s. So I choose to run up Growing Ranks which is probably a mistake because it makes this attack look pretty... okay never mind I thought I was gonna attack there but I ended up passing the turn with the hopes of him attacking back with the, the, uh, the ooze so I can kill it But unfortunately, he has a very good response with Sundering Growth, which not only makes him another 4-4, but gets rid of my my Populate Engine. Although this still does allow me to uh, trade off with one of his oozes. Not trade off, but basically gain net one life and get rid of his 4-4. But yeah, this makes Giant Growth very good for him, but I had a feeling he didn't have it. He only has three cards in hand, so that would have left him with two. Alright, so I believe I make another misplay here. I run out my Collective Blessing when I probably should have held up Tristani's Judgment Mana to get rid of his ooze, make another Centaur. I choose to hold back the Centaur to uh, hopefully block the ooze and kill it. And again, I don't believe he has a Giant Growth. But he has another response here, or maybe not. He has a Recto Shred Freak. Followed by a launch party. That's what it is. Yep, so that was very good value for him. And that's why Tristani's Judgment would have been much better for me there than uh, Collective Blessing. Because now I have nothing to populate, and I'm getting pretty close to dead. He has me on a two turn clock because he has seven power on the board. Um, I could have chosen to Tristani's Judgment here, but instead I leave him a mana for Revenging Arrow with the hopes of uh, drawing something to populate with Tristani's Judgment later like Eyes in the Skies. This way if I draw any creature basically I might be okay because then <clears throat> not only could I potentially populate it um, because of Collective Blessing, pretty much anything I play can block anything he tries to attack with and he's down to two cards. So pretty much it's down to the top decks here. I can survive one more turn after this because I can Judgment his Crows to Monitor in a last ditch survival effort. So I have pretty much two draw steps to draw a creature here. Alright, one draw step down and I get nothing. So I'm just gonna get rid of his guy. Obviously I have to. I have no other option. I'm just hoping he doesn't play another Shred Freak or something here. <clears throat> so 
So I'm just going to exile this monitor, which is much better than killing it, because this way he can't scavenge onto something. But at this point it doesn't really matter, because any of his creatures are lethal anyway. And he is going to put exactly lethal on the board here with a Towering Indrik, which is a 2-4, which is exactly what he needs. And that is not going to do it. Course of Might is kind of a cruel joke, considering I have zero creatures at the moment. But I'm going to have some fun with my opponent, try to make him think like I drew something. Alright. So obviously he's going to attack for lethal here. Nothing I can do about it. So in retrospect, um, I feel like some of these misplays might have saved me the game. Um, my deck was probably power on power level a little better than his, but... He played it much better than I did this match. Uh, that Golgari charm was really what did me in. Um, if it wasn't for that, he wasn't winning this game. But it happens. Instead, he's attacking with a 2 4 towering Indrik to kill me with my collective blessing. At least it's comfortably at 20 life. <clears throat> Alright, he goes into combat. And I tap my mana emphatically, say, oh, I have the removal spell, but instead I'm giving your, your towering injury plus zero, plus zero, and trample. Yep, so you can trample me to death. Alright, so I uh, ended up with some sweet enchantments that probably aren't worth anything, but even so, I feel like that was a good draft overall, and that shows you how you should build Selesnia. So thanks for watching.